Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be my review for Rain Season 2, Episode 7, The Prince of the Blood. And this episode was amazing. Definitely the best episode of the season. I absolutely loved it. I was totally into this episode. I will admit, for a little while in the episode, I did feel there was a little too much going on, but I felt that, no, this episode had enough going on, you know, this episode had a lot going on, but even though there was a little too much going on, everything was so interesting and everything holds so much weight to it that I had no problem that there was so much going on. There were like five or six storylines this episode, but I still loved it and by far the best episode of the season, and the ending to this episode was amazing, I loved it, and um... Just overall, really, really enjoying the show, and let's just get to this episode, because I really want to talk about it. So we see Lord and the Lady, they ride up in a carriage up to the castle, and she asks the footman for his flask, and he says no. And she flashes her cleavage, and he hands it over, and she tells him to wake her guy up and walks up. She flirts with one of the guards, then tells him to run to tell Catherine that her daughter is here, and he does so. So she, um, Travis is in after him, and, um, basically... Francis lies in bed and sees that Mary is gone. She's at one end of the table with her ladies in waiting. And he sits all the way down at the other end. And Mary tells Ken and Lola she's sick of him keeping secrets and bowing to corrupt nobles. And it makes sense, obviously, why she's upset about that. And it, uh, it totally makes sense why that's going on. Because of the fact that, you know, she doesn't really know what he's lying about. She doesn't know that he's lying. She doesn't know that he's keeping the secret. So, you know, nothing bad happens to her or Catherine, or any of them, you know, he knows that, and, um, you know, basically, I think that definitely is very interesting, and I just really love the storyline that's going on. So, Narcisse comes in, and the ladies leave in disgust, but Mary stays, and Narcisse has an edict that he wants Francis to sign, saying all residents have to come forward and state their religion, and Francis asks why they are pushing it, and Mary says it will call bloodshed in the streets, and Narcisse says it's about Protestantism, which... One of the things I loved about this episode was that finally it is now Catholics versus Protestants, and I love that. And basically it starts with the commoners, and by the time it spreads to nobles, it will be too late. And um, Bash then interrupts, you know, while they're talking and everything, and says Princess Claude has arrived, which apparently, I don't know if we've seen her before, I believe we have, but I'm not sure, because um, again, I didn't see season one, so um, if you, in the comments below, you guys can tell me, have we seen Princess Claude before? I don't think we have, but I, I think, I don't know, maybe we have, I don't know, but Mary's surprised that her sister's there, and Francis says they must go greet her, and Francis asks Narcisse if this is a request, and he says he never threatened his monarch, but if he doesn't sign it, and I love this, I thought this was amazing. Um, and this, basically after this, they cut to the intro, so it got really awesome here. He says, if he does not sign this edict, he will tell everyone that he committed patricide and killed his father, and that's not going to be good, because, of course, if he, if they find that out, then he's going to die. So, I thought that was so awesome, like, okay, this episode's going to be amazing, because the way they did that was just so, so well done, in my opinion. I, I love that so much. I love the way they started the episode. So... Catherine tells Father Benoit he was supposed to get Claude to Limagus, and he says she missed home and wanted to visit, and Claude shows up and says she cried and pleaded to come home, and she hugs her mother, who tells her that she smells of whiskey already, and I really like how funny of a character Claude is, she really is a funny character. And she hugs her mother, who tells her she smells, of, and basically Ferenc is there, and they hug, and Claude says he's married, can, he's king, married, and has a baby. And he introduces her to Mary, who asks if she remembers him, and Claude says she seems so tall in her memory. Um, if you remember, Mary was very tall um, in real life, you know, in, in real life Mary was very tall, so I like that they are alluding to that. And Claude runs to Bash, who introduces Kenna to her. And Claude is so snide to her. You can tell right away, this girl is extremely stuck up. Like, when I say she is stuck up, she is very self-centered. She, you know, you know how Kenneth sometimes is stuck up. She is sometimes very self-centered. But she's so much more self-centered than Kenna is. Because she's so self-centered. She's kind of like a rich person who's, like, really stuck up and everything. So, that's basically how she is. And I really liked her character because I thought she was really good, definitely. And, uh, basically... She is warm to Bash, but she's really rude to Ken, and she's very snotty to her. So, Mary sees Greer and runs to check on her. And, of course, the last time we saw this plot, I wasn't exactly fond of it. As I said before, I wasn't happy that they had Greer and um, Castle Roy get married so early. But now we know why, because we actually find out a really interesting twist about Castle Roy in this episode. 
because she has a cut in her wrist, and she says, and, you know, Mary's like, well, why do you have it? And she says that they were traveling through um, New Orleans, and um, they were attacked and robbed, and she says they barely made it back alive, you know, they're basically on their honeymoon and everything, and she begs Mary not to tell anyone, and Mary tells her to tell her the truth. And, you know, basically... Um, what ended up happening is that they were, and basically she tells them that they were attacked in Orleans because Castleroy didn't take mass. She says a church came after them, and basically that means that, yes, Castleroy is a Protestant, and Mary's freaking out. She's like, you married a Protestant? And Greer says she did, but hasn't converted. You know, she is a Catholic. She's not going to, you know, sometimes when you get married, you will switch religions and, you know, just because you're married and everything. Well, Greer says she's specifically not going to do that, which is a good thing for her because that's not going to end up well for her because of this, you know, feud going on right now. It's sort of like this war going on. So, I mean, it's good that she's not going to be, um, you know, switched to Catholic because that would not, I mean, switched to uh, Protestant because that obviously would not be good. So Mary tells her about the laws the nobles once signed to identify the Protestants, and Greer is shocked and says they'll be persecuted, and Mary says she'll try and persuade Francis not to sign it. You know, she's going to try to get him not to sign it so that way Castlewell is protected and no one will find out about it. And But the thing is, Francis has to sign that because if he doesn't sign it, then Mary's going to die and it's not going to end well. So Bash reports on to Francis on Narcissa's movements, and he says Lola visited the man, but he wants to know about the nanny. And Bash asks him if he hired Montgomery to kill their father, and Francis says no and says he killed their father himself by taking Montgomery's plant, place. And um, Bash says he understands and knows what a danger their father was, and Francis says Narcisse knows and has Montgomery hidden away as leverage. So Francis says he needs a way out so he doesn't have to sign the edict because he really doesn't want to sign it because he knows the kind of pressure that's going to be put on him. He knows that Mary is going to be very upset with him if he doesn't sign it, if he does sign it. You know, he knows that and he knows that he has to, but he doesn't want to at the same time. So basically, he tells Bash he can't ever tell Mary and he tells Bash that the nanny know, knew a lot and may know where Montgomery is. And Bash pledges his help and says they'll find, then kill Narcisse, and I thought that was a genius plan. And I like that Bash knows now. I like that Bash does know that um, Francis killed, you know, Henry. And it's really awesome, in my opinion, the way this is being handled. I definitely am looking forward to seeing what's, you know, this is definitely really awesome. So... Mary goes to find Francis and to talk about the edict, and she says she knows they're on the same side when she saw his reaction to the edict, and she tells him to take a stand and not sign it. But Francis says, you know, he may not have a choice, which he pretty much doesn't. He doesn't have a choice. Even though he wants a way out of it, he doesn't have a choice, really. Because he's the Catholic king of a Catholic nation, and says he has to take this into consideration. And she tells him the edict is wrong, he knows that in his heart, and he says there are limits to what he can do as a king, and he tells her he will handle it on his own, in his own way, and asks her to be patient, and she agrees. So, you know, she pretty much doesn't want to be patient, but she knows she has to be, and she knows it's going to put a lot of pressure on him, so she agrees to that. So, Louis services a woman, and I thought this was really funny, really random. Uh, Louis servicing a woman, and she asks how she'll go back to her husband now, and there's a knock, and it's Mary. And I thought that was really funny with Louis. And again, he doesn't have much of a purpose on the show, but he's just sort of like a comedic character, which I really do like. I like that he is just sort of a fun character that we watch. I definitely like that about his character. And they, they need to reveal more about him, but what they're doing with him, I'm enjoying. So basically, she tells him that she needs his help since her husband isn't giving her what she wants, and she tells him about the edict as they walk, and she says the nobles are too strong to oppose when they're united, and Louis asks why Francis isn't listening to her and asks how he can help, and she says they need a Protestant noble to openly oppose the edict, and she says there are other nobles that have converted to open the dialogue, and he says whoever does this risks everything, and she asks him to bring her a Protestant noble in private to talk, and... She says, if they don't speak up, the edict will go through, and they'll all be in trouble. Um, she's not really telling him what's going on with Greer, which I thought was interesting. Um, she doesn't really tell him what's going on there. Because that's the real reason why she's upset with us, because of Greer. She really, you know, Greer's one of her best friends, so she doesn't want this to happen to Greer, obviously. And I think that's really the reason why she's so upset. Plus, she cares about the Protestants. She genuinely cares about them. She knows that they are just another religion. You know, she knows that they're not bad people, which they're not. They're not bad people. This was a time, though, when if you were not Catholic, then people would be really upset with you. So, you know, I think it definitely is very interesting, and I like the way this whole thing is working out. So, basically, 
uh, we see that um, Kenna has a gift for Claude, and Bash tells her that Claude does not make female friends. She doesn't like female friends, which is obvious because of how snotty she was to Kenna. She wasn't nice to her. She was very rude to her. She was very much like, just get out of my way. I want nothing to do with you. And basically tells her not to bother, to not worry about, um, you know, Claude, and basically to just forget about her. So they're flirting, and he tells her he has to leave for court business, and he tells her he loves her and leaves. <clears throat> so Catherine has an encoded message that she shows to Francis, and she says it was in that traitor Gifford's chambers. And she says he was feeding Elizabeth information, and the tool is to decode if it is evidence of treason, and he asked to borrow one of them for something he's working on. And we see the two plague kids again, and this is, again was very weird, because if you remember in episode 4, we had that really weird thing going on, and I had no idea what was really going on there, and I didn't know what to say about it, but we actually find out what's going on here. Basically, she asks if she's to blame for their death, um, and she asks when she had the chance to protect them and why they're coughing, and she asks if that's how they die, because, you know, this, this girl starts coughing, we see her, like, something comes out of her hand, I thought it was gonna be blood, but it's not, they just stare at her, but then one coughs up a red rose, and the other says, Sister Cher. And it's really creepy, honestly. It reminds me of, like, The Shining Twins. I'm gonna be completely honest. It really reminds me of The Shining. These two girls look exactly like The Shining Twins, first of all. They're very creepy, and I really like that about the show. The show knows when to be creepy, and I definitely really am enjoying that. So a service comes to report to Catherine on Princess Claude, and she finds her daughter in bed with the priest, and she says she doesn't have time to deal with this. So... You know, basically, Francis comes to ask Lola about her relationship with Narcisse because he knows that she and Narcisse did talk and everything. And me personally, as I said before, I don't understand why Narcisse is so different when he's with Lola, which we'll talk about. But um, I don't understand why he's so different when he's with Lola. When he is with everyone else, he is this very intimidating person. When he's with Lola, though, it's like completely different. So he tells Lola that he's very dangerous, obviously, and asks him to stop by his estate and hide an envelope somewhere so he won't find it, and he says insurance in case Narcisse betrays him. And she asks how she can do this, and he asks her to choose which of them is the better man, if it's him, to help him, and he says Narcisse will spill any amount of blood to get what he wants, which is true, he would do that. So Claude watches Father Benoit sent off in shame and tells her mom she loved him, and Catherine says she seduced the poor little priest to get him to bring her home. She says she sent her away because she can't stand her and begs her mom to keep her there. She says she spent years with strangers and missed her father's funeral, her brother's wedding, and coronation, and asks her mother why she hates her, and Catherine tells her she can stay as long as she can behave, and it kind of makes sense why Catherine hates her. I mean... Catherine is very is a very controlling person, but her daughter is straight up a bit is a straight up bitch. Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest. She's a straight up bitch, and she needs to realize that. So she needs to understand that she is definitely very bitchy, and she needs to basically watch her attitude. Basically, so Lola visits with Narcisse at his estate, and he compliments her hair. And basically, she is there because she really wants to see if this letter thing is a good idea because she does genuinely care about Narcisse. And she thanks him for letting her stop to have her horses seen too. She says she can't stay long and says there's a boat party for Princess Claude. And she asks if he'll be there and he says no. He offers her a bath again and she asks what's with him in baths. And he says he'll tell her why she's soaked. She tells him to draw her a bath and he says he'll get a servant. But she tells him um, it must be him. And he likes that she gave an order. Because if you remember that whole bath thing happened last week but she didn't want that to happen. She had the other people go in that bath and because she didn't want to get too like close to him. And he likes that she gave him an order and tells her she's luring, and she hides the envelope behind a painting, comes back with wine, and he tells her it's help her, it's going to help her relax, and she seems nervous, and she is. Um, you can tell right away she is very nervous. But once again, these two have such good chemistry, and I don't know what it is, but they just have such genuine chemistry, and I really feel the show is just setting up the, these two get, starting a relationship. I don't know what it's going to be. But I can definitely see these two starting a relationship. I can just see it happen. So, at the party, Louis points out Lord Kane to Mary, who is a Protestant, and Francis reports to Knowles that he's had word about another English spy, and says if they find the cipher, they will find the spy. So Lola's soaking in the tub, and Narcisse comes in, he asks why she's there, and he says he thinks the bath is the perfect place to discuss philosophy, since they are both very vulnerable. So he says, if they go on, they will be open to each other in every way possible. And he says, they must trust each other completely. And she says, the risk is always greater for a woman. He says, when Francis learns of their relationship, he will make things very difficult. Um, because Francis doesn't realize that these two are in kind of a relationship. 
She asks why Francis thinks he's an enemy, and he tells her, sit and enjoy her bath or get out and come down to the drawing room and start on a journey of... Tr and I really like what he says to her. He says, I want you to start on this journey with trust in me. It's not going to be something that's not going to change your life. It is going to be life-changing, but, um, you know, you can do this if you want to. So Lola thinks about this. Definitely, that's that's a lot to process because he's like, oh, you know, it might, it's not going to, it's going to change your life, just so you know. You know, you can go on this journey with me, but just so you know, it is going to change your life. That's one of the things I love about Narcisse. He's such an intimidating villain, but when he's with Lola, he's just, like, so much more different in the sense that he is more calm with her and things like that. I don't know how to describe it, but he definitely is very, different with her so Claude asks Francis about bashing Kenna and he says their father threatened to kill them if he didn't marry and she asks about Kenna sleeping with their dad bash and now gives her gifts and Francis tells her not to make trouble for them and says Kenna is a good person who loves bash which is true I personally think Ken and Bash, they are good. I don't think they're going to have any sort of relationship problems or anything because I just think they're in a very good spot with their relationship right now. So Mary and Catherine watch Louis, and she says he's a prince of the blood, and the Bourbons were once rivals for the throne. That's why this episode was called Prince of the Blood, um, basically. So she says the Bourbon princess were once in line if she couldn't produce a male heir, and Narcisse tells Lola that Francis killed his father and reveals he is blackmailing him to keep the nation strong and Catholic. And I thought that was amazing that he's doing that. I love that twist. I thought that was just great that basically he said that. And now Lola knows. So Lola knows that Francis killed his father. And she asks what she's supposed to do with this huge secret. And basically he tells her that when Francis comes and asks her to betray his trust, he wants her to know which of them told her the truth. So she's actually working with Narcisse, which I think is awesome, because I personally felt that's what was going to happen here, is that she was going to end up working with Narcisse, and I think that's really cool that that's what's really going on. So... Kane tells Mary she's asking him to be a martyr, but she says it's time to come out of the shadows and let Francis know there are Protestant nobles that will stand with him. They're not all going to turn against him. There are some that will work with him. And he asks why she's helping, and she says she has friends who would share his fate. And he says she has to sleep on it, and he will give her an answer tomorrow. So fireworks start, and Louis tells Mary she's daring and fierce, and she says she has to be until others are the same. And I like seeing Louis kind of take action with this. I definitely am enjoying them, giving Louis more and more to do every episode. As I said, I, I do like that. So Francis paces as Lola comes back from Narcisse's, and obviously it, she has a very difficult decision to make. Is she going to listen to Francis or is she going to listen to Narcisse? And she asks what was in the envelope, and she asks if it could cause his death, and she asks why, and he says he needs insurance, and he refused to tell her anything, and she says she doesn't need to know, he asks if she planted it, and she says she couldn't have to leave, he says he, she had to do it, and she asks why, and if he's the better man, and she says one of them used her, and it wasn't Narcisse. So... She knows that, you know, he knows the whole thing when Narcisse is going on, so pretty much he, what she's saying is that Francis is, is using her. So I think that definitely is very interesting, and I like how she kind of is taking Narcisse's side with this. And it makes sense why she is taking Narcisse's side. I understand why she is taking his side. So next day, Kane comes into court, and Narcisse has Francis in front of everyone to sign the edict and says all the nobles are in support of it. Mary says Kane is too scared. Louis steps up and says he's not a noble. Um, you know, he says it right away. He's not a noble and everything. So, basically, um, okay, where was I? Um, <laughs> I lost my place. Um, Mary says Cain is too scared, and basically, um, he's the prince of the blood and a Protestant, and he says he stands there to tell them that the Protestants of France are not his enemy, and he asks France to stay on the right stand of history, and Narcisse says Condé stands alone, and France says he's only one man, another steps up, then another, then Cain, and Louis asks Francis to take the time to think more about this law, and he tells them no one must harm these men for coming forward, and says he'll think about the law some more. And Mary tells Louis he was brave, and he says he did it for her. She tells him he has her gratitude, and I definitely really enjoy um, Mary genuinely caring for um, Louis. I definitely really enjoy that. So Mary goes to stand by Francis. He tells her he knows she had a hand in this, and she says she wanted to give him the chance to do the right thing, because she doesn't want him to sign this edict, as we know. And Bash comes back and says the nanny, Caroline, is dead and has been dead for weeks. So Francis says Mary keeps trying to buy him time. And he says he can't put her life at risk and tells Bash to ready a boat to get Mary out in case he's accused of regicide. Um, because he knows it could end up happening. So Francis says he has to face the consequences and better he than France. And he tells Bash to make sure Mary is safe. 
Bash says it could cost him his life, but he says he has to do it. And Francis goes to Mary and tells her he was mistaken and that she was right to get involved. And he says she and Louis will work together, but she says the two of them are a better team. And she has no idea what he's about to do. That he's basically about to, um, you know, do this to her. So... He says he won't sign the edict, but says it may be dangerous, and he says he's king and asks what they can do to him. He kisses her and says no matter what happens, and um, he tells her he loves her. So, basically, I was, like, really in shock that he is deliberately lying to her. I understand he's lying to her to protect her, but he really needs to come clean to her. I know he doesn't want to because he knows what kind of leverage would be on him if he did tell her what's going on. But, at the same time, he needs to tell her. So, Kenna complains to Bash that Claude is ignoring her. She wants to know why Claude's ignoring her, because she's kind of tired of Claude just, you know, shutting her out. And she asks what the issue is, and Bash says she's jealous and petty because Kenna's the most beautiful woman at court, and he leaves her. So, in another hall, Claude runs up to him and asks why he hasn't said hello, and she asks if he misses the way they used to play, and he says nothing would have ever happened between them if she hadn't convinced him that Henry wasn't his father. You know, and I thought that was, that's basically what we know is going on, that he slept with her. And he says it won't happen again and walks off. And you can see that Claude is definitely going to stir up trouble for them. I really hope she doesn't try to split up Kenna and Bash because I do legitimately like them together. And I just want them to be happy, okay? Can they? Can we have one couple in the show that is legitimately happy? It's just, it needs to happen because I like seeing them just being happy and him being a good husband to her. I like seeing that, definitely. So... Franz tells Narcisse he's not going to sign the edict even to save himself, and he says he won't take orders from him and would rather lose his head. And I thought this was amazing when Narcisse says, he says, okay, that's fine, but if he asks if he's ready to sacrifice the life of his wife and his mother, and he says if anyone guesses they'll be implicated, Narcisse tells him that Mary and Catherine planned to kill Henry at confession a couple of days before he died, so they were a part of it, and he says that all three of them will suffer and die, and he says... You know, what he thinks will happen to his brothers and bastard sons when France is gone. And he says the Velos line will be wiped out. And he's basically, basically what he's going to do is if he kills Francis, everyone else is going to die. So, you know, France has no choice but to sign this edict. He's like, I'm not doing this. I have to sign this edict. So Catherine sees the dead girls one more time, but the ladies with her don't. And she tells the woman to leave her. And she follows the girls as they enter some sort of chamber. And Catherine asks why they're with her daughter. And a girl coughs up a rose and places it on Claude's chest. And she calls her sister. And Catherine asks if they are Iman and Henriette, her dead children that passed in infancy. When they were infants, they died. And I thought that was amazing that we found that out. Now we know why she's seeing them. And I'm wondering if that actually is what's going on here. And basically, they ask if she loves Claude more than them. They reach for Claude, and Catherine freaks out. And Claude wakes, and Catherine says she has to leave. And Claude asks why. And basically, it's because of the fact that she is going crazy at this point. So, Narcisse runs into Lola in the hall. She says his reputation is all about games. She says she read all about him. She says court is over, full with available women, and asks why her. He says he has no ulterior motive, because she wants to know, out of everyone that he could be with, why would he choose her? And Narcisse says he loves games, but he has never had a worthy adversary. Lola says Francis is her king and friend. They can't continue. He kisses her, pulls her into an alcove. She slaps his face, tells him to not seek before she offers to give. And he says he's glad to see she's thinking of giving. And um, basically, I was very surprised that he ended up doing that, that he kissed her and everything. And I'm wondering if now she's going to, you know, um, basically work with Francis. Doesn't seem like she's going to work with Narcisse now, so we'll have to see definitely what happens here. Because I do feel that Narcisse wants to work with Lola. He genuinely cares about her, and he wants to help her with her. He, you know, he wanted to help her with the dowry last week, and that he, uh, you know, did. He There was nothing with that in this episode, but I do feel he legitimately cares about Lola, or he just wants him to work for her. So it's one of the two things. Either way, he legit, he really does care about this. So, Mary finds Greer... And I thought this scene was amazing. She tells him that Francis signed the edict. She goes up to him and freaks out. She is legitimately pissed at him because he lied directly to her face. And he says he realized he needed the support of the nobles. She calls him a liar and a coward. He tells her, he tries to tell her he did this for her. She says she waited for the man she loved to return, but that man is dead. He tells her if that's what she thinks, she should leave him and return to Scotland. And she storms out. He goes to sit alone on his throne. And I can't believe he just said that to her. Like, I can't believe it. And he obviously knows he did wrong. On. He obviously knows that, but he knows that she was going to freak out on him, but he also knows that this was what he had to do. He had no choice but to sign that, um, you know, edict, because if he didn't sign it, 
then it, you know, then pretty much Mary and Catherine would have died. So let's talk a little about this episode. Overall, guys, this episode was amazing. And um, definitely he needs to tell Mary the truth. Like, he needs to tell her now because they are going to get a divorce if he does not tell her. I can tell that these two are probably going to end up getting a divorce. You know, if he does not tell her within the midseason finale... I wouldn't be shocked if she wants to file for a divorce already. I mean, it'd be really sad because I like these two as a couple. I think they are two very good... I mean, there are two main, main leads on the show, so they're one of the best parts of the show, definitely, and they make the show, so it's going to be really sad to see if they get a divorce, especially because we had the whole wedding and then the coronation thing, and it'd be really sad to see if that would happen, but if it happens, Francis basically did to himself. I'd, I'd have to say that. I think he did. Um, as far as Greer goes... I really hope that Mary tries to protect Greer because now Castleroy is in big trouble because this law is going to go into effect and now Mary's going to have to do what she can to protect Castleroy and I really feel bad for Greer because of this because it seemed like her and Castleroy did legitimately love each other and they did really care about each other and it seems like now that that's not happening that Greer is going to be pretty much screwed because she really does want to be with Castleroy and Mary's going to have to do what she can to protect her because she does care about Protestants. Also, what happens to Louis now? Louis is going to be a very much more interesting character because he just signed that, and that means that Louis, you know, it, really bad stuff's going to happen to him. Also, Lola. Do you think Lola's going to end up working with um, Francis now? I feel like she does not want to work with Narcisse because she's wondering why would he just randomly pick her. I understand why she would think that. And if she does want to work with Narcisse, I think that could be really cool, and I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of dynamic they have because I do like them possibly working together. I like that idea. I think that's interesting, definitely. And I'm interested in seeing where that's going to go. And also, does Narcisse legitimately care about her, like wants to start a relation with her, or does he just want to work with her? I don't really know what he wants Catherine is going to have to get rid of Claude because she's going crazy, and Claude, I do not like her at all. I think Claude is going to ruin things. I really hope that Claude does not try to get, ba you know, um, break up Bash and Kenna. Do you think she's going to do that? I like Bash and Kenna. I know some people don't like Kenna, but I personally do like Kenna. I don't think she's a bad character. I think she's a good character. She hasn't done too many, like, bad things or anything annoying. Um, the sex journal thing was kind of annoying. I wasn't really into that, but... I do really like them as a couple, and I wouldn't want, um, you know, Claude to just come back to break them up. That'd be really stupid. Um, also, Catherine, I really am feeling bad for Catherine. You know, she definitely is going through that grief that's happening to her because now that Claude's back, you know, she is picturing, like, her dead daughters wondering if she cared about Claude more than she did with them, and it's really sad to see that happen. But that's basically it for my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys saw this episode. I thought this episode was amazing. Um... By far the best episode of the season so far. And let me know what you guys thought. And I will see you guys in my next video. Which will be my review for either a movie review. Or for my review of the season premiere of The Missing. Because I am actually watching it tomorrow guys. Because you can watch the first episode online. And I'll, I'll explain that in the next video. Okay. Bye.